Hi and welcome to another video of Kipware CYC machining cycle time estimating software. In this video we're going to create a cycle time estimate uh, based on the part that you see on the screen. Uh, we've got basically an 8 inch piece of stock, uh, slug stock, that uh, we're going to put into the lathe, uh, do some uh, turning work where we're going to do the 4.5 inch diameter and the uh, flange on the outside, 7.750. And then we're going to turn it around and face off the remaining material. Then put it in a machining center and do the three and a half inch uh, diameter pocket, uh, spot drill, drill and ream, uh, the four uh, half inch holes. Uh, so let's uh, let's dive right in. Uh, Kipware CYC, we're going to go into the estimate specifics, which is basically the uh, reference information uh, for the cycle time estimate in the part that you're going to be creating. I'm not going to bore you with the data entry, uh, just to show you the screen as it's completed. And basically, we're looking for the part name, print number, revision, uh, the date of the estimate, and who is uh, doing the estimate. Just so when you pull it up uh, two or three months from now, uh, you make sure that you have the right uh, part, and uh, the estimate is uh, the estimate that you desired. So we're going to close this out, and we're going to go in and now to start to machine the part. Uh, basically, we're going to use the uh, database information that's uh, already in uh, Kipware CYC. Uh, if you need more information about how the databases work and uh, we have a cutting database which is cutting parameters and a uh, machine database which is machine parameters. Uh, if you need more information for this these are available on our uh, Kipware video training website. Uh, but for our uh, estimate right now we're going to use the uh, stock information that comes uh, with the software. So we're going to use operation number one we're going to pull down for our machine name and what we're going to do is we're going to put it into our SL10. Uh, our material is 4150 steel. In the main operation name we're going to do some rough turning. A sub operation name we're going to be using our carbide uh, cutting parameters that are in our database. And we're going to put a uh, operation description. Uh, so we're going to rough turn side one. And side one is going to be the uh, four and a half inch diameter uh, off the 8 inch diameter. So we come into the operation specifics now and we're going to put handling time. Uh, the handling time in this case is going to be the time that it's going to take to put that uh, piece of 8 inch stock into the pie jaws so that we can start machining it and uh, we're going to put 20 seconds for that. And to calculate the length of cut I'm going to open up our Kipware CLC. Every operation in Kipware CYC requires a tool's length of cut and uh, basically this is to determine how long the tool is in the cut uh, so we can get the cutting time from it. And Kipware Cut Length Calculator is going to help you determine that length of cut using a conversational or fill in the blank form. So we're going to go to our turning operations. Uh, we're going to select OD turning. And you can see from this screen we can do up to six different diameters, but we've basically got two diameters. The 7.750, which is off the 8 inch stock diameter, and the 4.5 inch diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by selecting two diameters. Uh, finish diameter number one is 7.750, and its distance from the face. Uh, we're going to go, the part is inch and 375 to finish up. Uh, so we're going to go about 1.400 and we'll catch the rest of it when we uh, turn it around and do side number two. Uh, the finished diameter, uh, number two, is four and a half inches and that is one inch from the face of the part. So the OD of the rough stock is eight inches. Our uh, depth of cut, uh, let's say we're going to take 50 thousandths for our depth of cut. Uh, we're going to leave 10 thousandths on the faces and uh, 10 thousandths on the diameters. So I'm going to calculate my roughing operation here uh, by hitting the calculate button. And I've got 36.84 as calculated by uh, Kipware uh, Cut Length Calculator. So I'm going to go back to my form. I'm going to put in my 36.84 inches. Uh, the average tool or work diameter is going to be about uh, 6 inches and uh, no number of flutes, no pitch. So I'm going to hit the calculate button and now the software is going to go through, uh, look through the database, it's going to come up with the RPM and a feed rate which I can adjust at any time. Uh, let's say I want to make this 350 RPM. I can certainly do that here. Uh, these are the recommended feeds and speeds based on what you have uh, in your cutting parameter database. Uh, so since I changed the RPM I'm going to do a recalc and I get a 9.19 uh, total time to do this particular operation. 
Uh, so I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to do operation number two, which is my finishing operation. So I'm going to copy the last, which gets me my machine and my material. I'll pull down for my operation name. Again, my sub-operation is my carbide parameters. Here I'm going to finish turn uh, side two. Uh, no handling time, since we're already uh, in the chuck. Uh, my length of cut. Now, since I didn't close out my uh, CLC screen from last time, I still have all my information in here. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the finishing operation. And what I need uh, is my uh, dimensions and then the OD of the rough stock. And automatically, uh, the software is going to make a profiling cut uh, to finish that diameter. So I get 3.15 now is my length of cut. I'm going to go back to my screen here. 3.15. Uh, average tool diameter is about 6 inches. And again, I'm going to hit the Calculate button. And I've got uh, my RPM, my feed rate that's been calculated, and my total time is 1.58 uh, to do this finishing operation. I'm going to turn it around, so I'm going to do operation number 3. I'm going to grab my copy last. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some uh, rough turning. I'm going to use my carbide parameters. And I'm going to rough, rough turn side 2. Uh, handling time, again, I am going to have to turn this part around here. Uh, my length of cut, so I'm going to open up my cut length calculator again. I'm going to go to my turning operations, and I'm going to select facing. Uh, the OD of the rough stock is 8 inches. Uh, the amount of stock for removal is a quarter of an inch. Uh, we're going to go all the way to 0. I'm going to take 50,000 steps to cut, and I'm going to leave a 10,000 on the face. So I'm going to hit Calculate again, and I've got 20 inches as my length of cut. So going back to my form, I'm going to put in my 20 inches, average tool work diameter 6, and then hit the Calculate button. So 6.23 to face a quarter of an inch off that uh, side. I'm going to use operation number 4 now. I'm going to copy the last, and I'm going to go into Finish Turning. Again, my carbide parameters. Here I'm going to Finish Face Side 2. Uh, my Length of Cut. Go back to my uh, CLC. And here I still have my information here. Amount of stock for removal, I'm going to put 10 thousandths. My Depth of Cut is 50. And I've got 4 inches for my Length of Cut. So I'm going to go back, put my 4 inches in and do a calculate. So 1.99 uh, to do uh, the finish facing operation. At any time in CLC I can open up my list of operations and I can see how I'm doing. So I've got basically 19 minutes to uh, do that part, uh, the turning part of it. Now we're going to go back. Uh, we're going to come up to operation number 5. And we're going to switch machines. Uh, we're going to put it in our HARS, our HARS VF1. Uh, we're going to use the same material. And then I'm going to do uh, the pocketing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some rough milling. I'm going to use a uh, carbide end mill. And I'm going to put in as a rough pocket. So the handling time, again, this is going to be the first operation. So I'm going to have to put it into the, uh, into the uh, pie jaws on my uh, milling vise. So I'm going to put 20 inches for that. And my length of cut, again, uh, back to CLC. This time, milling operations. I'm going to do a round pocket. Uh, I'm going to do the roughing operation. Uh, the pocket's a half an inch deep. I'm going to take 100 thousandths each time, so I'm going to take five cuts. My radius of the cutting tool is a quarter of an inch. I'm going to use a half inch end mill. The radius of the pocket. Uh, the pocket is three and a half, so that's 1.750. Leave 20 thousandths on the on the uh, walls, and I'm going to use a step over. Uh, with a cut overlap of 30 thousandths. If I calculate this, I got 103.04. So back to uh, CLC, 103.04. Uh, my tool diameter is a half an inch. Uh, I've got a two fluid end mill. And we're going to do a calculate. Uh, 2,000 RPM, eight, eight, uh, 8 inches per tooth, so 34 inches a minute, uh, 3.49. Uh, is my calculated time based on my parameters that I have uh, in my database. Operation number six.
going to copy the last, and this time we're going to do some finish milling uh, using my uh, carbide end mill. Uh, my operation description is going to be a finish pocket. Uh, this time my length of cut. Again, I didn't close my screen in CLC, so I have all my information in here. I'm going to do my finish wall and floor. Uh, this time I'm going to change my uh, cutter diameter to 375. I'm going to use a 750 end mill to do this. Uh, everything else is the same here. And do the calculate button. So I've got 15.11 as my length of cut to finish uh, the bottom of the pocket and then the walls of the pocket. Uh, so I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go back to 15.11 and my average tool diameter 750. Uh, I've got a four flute end mill to finish the side and the walls and we'll do a calculate. 1528, about 36 inches a minute, to 0.56 to finish up uh, that pocket. Operation number seven, now we're going to do some drilling. So I'm going to copy the last. Uh, first we're going to spot drill uh, with a high speed uh, you can use my high speed parameters that I have in my cutting da uh, database. I'm going to spot drill the four holes. Uh, it's already in the in the uh, chuck, so no handling time. My length of cut going to go about 200 thousandths on each hole, so that's 800 thousandths total. Uh, my average tool and work diameter is a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to do the calculate. So about 764 RPM, 7 inches a minute, 0.27 to spot drill the holes. And now we're going to drill the holes for the reamer. So we're going to copy the last. I'm going to do some drilling. Uh, I'm going to use my high speed. We're going to drill the four holes. Uh, my length of cut, uh, the part is 375 deep, so I'm going to go 450 on each hole which gives me a length of cut of 1.800. Uh, the tool diameter is going to be uh, 0.484. Uh, and we're going to do a calc. So we've got uh, 394, about uh, 4 inches a minute, 0.66 to do those to do those holes. And now we're going to ream them. Uh, so I'm going to do operation number 9. I'm going to copy the last. going to do some reaming uh, with a uh, carbide reamer. We're going to ream, going to ream the four holes, and the length of cut is going to be the same as the last time uh, because we're going to go about the same distance to ream those holes through. Uh, the average tool and work diameter is a half an inch, and then we can calculate. So we get about 0.23 uh, minutes to be able to do those operations. So this pretty much completes the part. Uh, if I want to take a look at what I've done so far in my total time, uh, you can see that I can. Uh, I've got about 24 minutes uh, to do the part complete, both turning, uh, milling operations, uh, based on my database parameters that I have in there and the operations that I've described. Let me just go through this screen a little bit, uh, the view operations screen, which is a really uh, kind of a handy screen. Let's say I just want to look at my operations for the Haas VF1. Uh, you know, I can break it down and I can look at just how much the milling is going to do. Uh, let me see how much the turning is going to do. And again, we've got our 19 minutes in there. Or I can view all the machines. I can also delete operations. I can copy operations. So uh, if you're doing an estimate and one operation is similar to another, like our drilling and milling, uh, we could have just copied the operation and then opened it up and did some uh, changes to it, maybe selected a reaming operation instead of the drilling and just uh, you know made some changes that way without having to complete the screen if it's a, it's a more complicated operation. Uh, one of the keys here is the reorder operations. So when you're estimating cycle time with CYC, you can just pretty much just estimate uh, the, the operations that you're going to do. I could have done, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to face that part first, uh, then I'm going to turn it around and do some rough and finish turning, and then I'm going to spot the holes, then I'm going to do the pocket, rough it, finish it. Uh, not necessarily the way that it would go to the machine and you would do the operations to actually machine the part. Uh, when you're looking for cycle time, you're basically just looking to make sure you get all those operations in there uh, so you have a complete time. And when it comes time, uh, you win the job and it has to go out on the shop floor, here's the way the reorder operations are come in handy so that you can start to list it in the operations that you want it to be performed as you send it out to the shop. And why would you do that? Well, the reason is because Kipware CYC outputs a, a very uh, nice routing sheet 
The routing sheet lists each operation that it takes to make the part. It lists the RPM and the feed rate and the time for each operation. And this is a really valuable tool to send to the shop floor because the guy on the shop floor now has a target when he's setting up the job. Uh, he knows the RPM and the feed rate that you use. He knows the time for each of the operations that you're that you've estimated and so he can maybe come back to you and say uh, you know what uh, we, we go a lot faster with that tool uh, than you estimated so you know next time we can go a little faster so you can go into your database you can adjust the uh, RPM or the surface feet and the feed rate for that particular tool inside that particular operation and then the next time you have an operation or you're doing an estimate where that operation is coming into play uh, the RPM and the feed rate calculated will be a little bit more closer to what actually happens on the shop floor so actually the more you use CYC the more feedback you get from the shop floor the more accurate that the software becomes because the key to cycle time estimating is to make sure that what you're estimating is actually taking place on the shop floor. Uh, now we've got a lot of people out there who uh, kind of copy us and sell, tell you that that's the truth and you know we've lived on the shop floor for over 25 years and that is the truth. If you estimate and the guys on the floor can't hit your targets then uh, you know your estimate is not going to be correct and you're going to lose money because it's going to take longer time uh, to make the part. So CYC gives you a chance to massage those databases, get feedback from the floor, and actually make the software more accurate uh, the more uh, that you do estimates with it. So that's pretty much an outline of uh, Kipware CYC. Uh, thanks for watching our video, and uh, you can get more information on Kipware CYC at our website, which is uh, kentechinc.com. That's K-E-N-T-E-C-H-I-N-C.com. Thank you.